full update on the status of the Sunshine Ordinance. Daryl Powell with the CLA's office. Um, what happened is the committee instructed the CLA with the assistance of the city attorney, uh, Dunn, uh, uh, council committee uh, staff, and representatives, representatives of the Neighborhood Council Review Commission to report on the key elements of the new uh, Sunshine Ordinance proposed by NCRC and how it would be implemented. Um, the, the NCRC drafted a proposed Sunshine Ordinance specifically applicable to neighborhood councils as part of its recommendations to improve the citywide system of neighborhood councils. Um, your committee established a working group, and uh, last year we had uh, many meetings on this issue. And um, after reviewing the document, uh, we found that the key elements contained in the proposal included allowing uh, allows for gathering of a majority of members of neighborhood councils for information gathering and discussion of an issue, uh, allows for serial meetings, requires posted agendas to include a name, contact information, and any person who can provide more information relative to the agenda item, uh, prohibits special meetings, emergency meetings, closed meetings, allows for meeting uh, locations within three miles outside of the boundaries of a neighborhood council. If it's, if it's within a city-owned facility, uh, prohibits tele teleconferencing, and any person may file a written complaint with done within 30 days, uh, requires public records that are not exempt from disclosure to be made available promptly, requires neighbor council to prepare minutes that uh, clearly indicate what action was taken with respect to each agenda item, and uh, lastly, each neighborhood council must maintain records in compliance with the records retention schedule adopted by the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners. Uh, the working group will meet within two weeks to finalize their report and report back to committee on this item. That's our status report. Okay, then um, the action, we don't have any, uh, we don't have any cards on this matter, so uh, the action before us is uh, to instruct the department, the uh, working group, I should say, to present a written report to the committee. Um, any particular time frame? We're looking at June 20th, I believe. I don't know, sometime, within 30 days, if not sooner. Okay, um, then. Although, uh, Gwen Point, technically this isn't an action item. That It's just here for a verbal report and the working group was prepared to meet it in any event. So the, you, the committee had already instructed the working group to report back, so mm -hmm. we're prepared to do so. So you don't need to take any action. Are they going to be doing a written report? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, then uh, we'll schedule that for um, four weeks. Is that enough? Sure. Good. Sure. Okay, so we'll, we'll schedule that. June 6th, is that fine, or did you want to? June 6th. You want to do it later? That's fine with me. I mean, later, no. the following meeting. June twenty fourth. It's up to you. June forty. June twenty fourth, please. <laughs> Gwen wants to get it off her chest. <laughs> <Which, laughs> we're done. <laughs> Go ahead. Whatever day works for you, CLA. You're preparing the report. <laughs> June twenty fourth, please. <laughs> well, I didn't see you have four extra days. Yeah. <laughs> do we have a meeting on the, on June twenty fourth? It's yes. actually June twenty three. June 23rd, Tuesday okay. the 23rd. I stand corrected. June we'll 23rd. We'll agendize that for June 23rd and, and in, in anticipation of a written report. Item number two. Item number two is a resolution of Wiesar, Han, LaBonge relative to including in the 2009-10 legislative program support for... Uh, uh, hold on. Uh, Council Member Wiesar has requested that we uh, hold this matter in committee. Uh, so with his request, we'll, we'll do that. Okay. Item number three. Okay. Uh, item number three, Department of Neighborhood Empowerment Report relative to neighborhood council equipment uh, purchases. Jeez. Bumline Cam Neighborhood Empowerment. Um, this is to update you on the project to go out and uh, collect all the inventory of equipment from neighborhood councils. As included in the uh, written report to the committee, March 25th, I sent a letter out to all the neighborhood councils uh, informing them that uh, inventory 
process program was in place, asked them to list all the equipment that was at least $1,000 in cost, any computer hardware, including desktop or laptop computers, regardless of cost, any digital cameras, regardless of cost, and any electric or electronic office and communications equipment, such as printers and copying machines, regardless of cost. We've received 10 responses so far, and we've received many requests for extensions. And uh, once we collect enough information in terms of uh, what neighborhood councils uh, have a record of having in their possession or not in their possession, we prepared a form for them to um, attest to the fact that if there is missing equipment, that to the best of their knowledge, uh, this is where it's at, um, so that we have a formal record of all the uh, equipment that was purchased by neighborhood councils. Uh, you said you received 10? Yes. What, what, what did they say? Uh, I haven't had a chance to look at what came in so far. Okay, then we'll, uh, we'll hold this matter until we get a, uh, uh, till the next meeting, mm -hmm. see if m more information comes in. But yeah, I would like to uh, get a, uh, an analysis from the department. Sure. Okay, item number, uh, that's, it. that's it? Well, we have public comments. I'm sorry, we had a, uh, what is this on number two? It's public comments. It's public comments. You held that item. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is. Oh, okay. Then we'll put this in the file? Yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, first, uh, Jim Hubach. with the Glassell Park Neighborhood Council and uh, just here to make general comments about the state of finances that affect neighborhood councils. I understand that uh, everybody is under tension and uh, at one o'clock this afternoon there's another it's very unusual for neighborhood councils true to be under tension that's true so far as finances go because the 50,000 is a is a good good size grant mm -hmm. uh, administration costs with translators, with minute takers, unless mm -hmm. the board members do it themselves, with office services, with reproduction, probably approximate the $11,000 that we understand is, is being considered as the limit for next year for neighborhood councils. Mm -hmm. I look through each of the uh, city council agendas before you meet, and one of the irritants that in these times uh, occurs to me is the what the city does to uh, waive costs for special interest groups under the, the rubric of special event city cost waivers. Mm -hmm. Today you will be considering a uh, $1,600 waiver for Cheap Chick Fashion Show and mm -hmm. another $1,700 waiver for an undesignated summer festival. Tomorrow, you'll be considering a $500 waiver for Coffee House Fest and $7,600 for Family of School 5K Fun Run and Expo and $3,000 for the Cristo Rey Catholic Church Festival. That's $12,009. If the city is interested in the concept of neighborhood councils, and if there is a problem with our funding because the city clerk's costs are going to be excessive in running our elections, I suggest here is an area for economies to be made. Thank you. Uh, Chris Rowe? Is it Rowe or Rowe? Rowe? Okay. Council member, Chris Rowe. Um, I just want to speak generally about the neighborhood councils. I only became a council member. I'm in West Hills Neighborhood Council back in last September. But I calculated for my income tax purposes, for example, that I drove over 800 miles just in the four months that I was a board member last year on neighborhood council business. Then now, until I got a parking, parking permit here, I was paying to park downtown, food that we eat. This is a lot of pocket expenses. In other words, the money that is given to our boards is not given to us to be using personally. 
Now, for example, this year we looked at our budget very heavily in February, and the police came to us. We have the new Topanga station. So they asked us for something called tack lights that go on their rifles or on their shotguns. $5,000 was granted by our board to them. Then schools came and said our school libraries are in need, and we gave them a donation. Our food pantries, uh, we have West Valley P Food Pantry, and they went from having uh, 600 families a year ago to about 1,300 families this year, and we gave them $3,500. And these are the types of things that our money go to. We are saving up for Fall Fest. We are saving up for an emergency preparedness event. Mm -hmm. So the money is not used frivolously. We, we have it, uh, it within committee, and then we take it to all our, our full board. So um, the, the concept that some people believe is that we're just out throwing parties, and that couldn't be for, the, for them the truth. We're actually trying to do needs assessment. For example, I know that you were on that train. You and I have had that discussion before uh, about the incident. And so our neighborhood council people are going to go through CERT training and, and uh, start trying to find ways to store supplies. So this is what we need our money for, to look at our community and see how best we can serve them. Thank you. Dr. Williams? <clears throat> Dr. Clyde Williams, uh, 4115 Barrett Road, El Sereno. Neighborhood councils and the budget. I did some calculations. On the average, this works out to $3 an hour for 2,700 people. But they don't get it in their pocket. They don't get it in their bank account. It goes to the community. For neighborhood councils, $10,000, $11,000. As the other people have said, this is trivial. It's actually rather insulting to the fact that in three days, four of our neighborhood council stakeholders got 1,500 signatures on a petition to Retain bus 256 in El Sereno to serve who? Not them, but the population, our people. Uh, with two weeks' notice, we had 150 people somewhat angry at a Caltrans presentation, whereas they had given us three days before. Every neighborhood council is constrained already by the fact that we are required to do things that the city council is not required to do. We can't have subjects coming up in special meetings, and we're only once a month rather than three times a week. So community impact statements. I've often said, hey, get rid of them because they're meaningless because the process that we have to go through cannot give you the community's participation in your decisions. So. Three dollars an hour, not even minimum wage. I, I, I'm not capturing your calculation. Okay, there, there are 90, 90 neighborhood90 councils. Eh, roughly 30 people participate in those per council. Some of them are quite large, some of them are quite small. But just assume 30. Ten hours a month times 12 months. That's a lot of hours. And remember, the money doesn't go into their pocket. You're ten thousand, eleven thousand, twelve thousand dollars a month, uh, a year. That's a thousand dollars a month for thirty people working maybe three hundred hours total. We do a lot of things, which I consider that the city council doesn't want the neighborhood councils, and I sure have experienced directly that the bureaucrats don't want neighborhood councils because it causes too many problems. We object to things. We find out about things that the community should have found out, you might say weeks or at least days before, but we find out that a tree is to be removed based upon a notice. Boom, and it's gone. People react, they stop it. Then it has to go back all through the process again, causing the bureaucrats a great deal of problems. One bureaucrat from the planning department said, remember, the city council is elected every four years. 
Remember that the commissions are appointed every four years. Remember that the bureaucrats are here forever. You know, $40,000, you know, what are we um, talking about? Yeah. You have a large number of employees. Okay, I, I hope the, the speakers are aware that this committee took no action with yeah. regard to the $50,000. Uh, it was the budget committee. And uh, uh, I, I think I can speak for Ms. Hahn and, and probably even Mr. Zion. That, uh, well, Mr. Zion, I believe, is on budget, isn't he? No, he's not on budget. None of us are on the budget committee. So uh, we were not uh, a part of that decision. I, I understand. So uh, uh, sort of preaching to the choir here. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate your Thank situation. You. When, I, when I ran for mayor, I think I called for more than 50,000. So um, yeah, Pre <laughs> preaching to the choir. <laughs> exactly. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Wiseman. Somebody finally sucked you, huh? Well, not quite. We're still healing from a surgery a few months ago. Yeah, hope you're all right. And it's coming along. At any rate, I want to pick up from what I've heard. The reason we come to this committee is this is the committee that we interact with the most. You've just been handed a community impact statement, which will go to the West Hills Community, uh, West Hills Neighborhood Council, the council that I serve on now. and. The idea is, I think we've, in that letter and in many you've probably received, captured a lot of the reasons for the value of the $50,000 we neighborhood council people have been receiving. As a matter of fact, when this was originated, and I went back uh, into the history of it, it was originated for office expenses, the rental of an office, uh, but for operational expenses. In fact, these monies have not been spent for that as much as they've been spent for community activities. You've heard some from Ms. Rowe, from Dr. Williams. There's a long list of these things, and it's a little different for every neighborhood, as every neighborhood should be different. But the reason we bring this to this committee is we want you to carry our message to the full council, please. Which is what? This is the decrease in funding for the neighborhood councils. I think most of the neighborhood councils will be comfortable with sharing their 10% drop from 50,000 to 45. I've heard that from many, many councils and many representatives that I've spoken to recently. Uh, that's part of our part of the sharing of the problem we have. However, we look to you as the committee that we address most directly and most frequently to carry our message to the city council. Now, this did not have time to get on a special request, as I think your offices, all three of your offices, have heard that request. However, it is still possible to get this to the full council as a recommendation from this committee and to balance at least what I think was a highly imbalanced and very threatening, as a matter of fact, very, very worrisome set of uh, words that I heard out of Mr. Park and Mr. Smith at the Business and Finance Committee. Yes, there are people who'd rather not have neighborhood councils around, as Dr. Williams said, and as I certainly endorse. We're a problem for you. We bring up the problems that you haven't solved. We put them right in your face. And we're going to keep on doing that even if there were no neighborhood council, because you've, you've now spawned 1,600 uh, people on our boards and God knows how many others, maybe 30,000 is, uh, uh, maybe 3,000 or maybe more, more thousands than that, who have become active in city government. That was why neighborhood councils were formed. Whether you like it or not, we have been formed. We are here. And whether any particular, yes, I know, there are, there are exceptions to that rule, unfortunately. And we look to you to carry our message to the full council. Please do so. Uh, the good work that we're doing, I think, is worthy of its support and worthy of these very few dollars in a very large budget. There'll be a lot more to say about the other parts of the budget, but yeah. other committees, other times. Thank you, sir. Uh, for what it's worth, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Weisman, uh, Dr. Weisman. Uh, 
Um, I will be convening a special hearing on Friday uh, morning to discuss uh, just this matter. Uh, in particular, I want to ask the city clerk uh, why it's going to cost 2.5 million in fixed uh, budget items and another 1.5 in in uh, on in election expenses. Mm -hmm. uh, today, That's I will introduce question. a motion uh, to in the council to defer the election to the next year uh, to save some money in the sub in the, the current uh, budget consideration year. Um, and uh, that should uh, have a savings impact of at least 1.5 million. Uh, but I believe if we scrutinize the expenditures in the city mm -hmm. clerk, we can do better. So those are two items. Uh, my goal would be to, uh, uh, oh, and then thirdly, we want to uh, provide somewhat of a, a sort of a credit card to neighborhood councils to use instead of money uh, get services from the various departments. We do uh, have a credit card yeah. system in place. Already. No, 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 no. Right. not it's that credit card. Else. Not that credit card system. I'm, I, I'm not talking. We're not going to give you a credit card. We're saying you have credit with the city departments. That's what my motion will propose. So that if you want to fix a sidewalk in your neighborhood, you get some street services. Uh, that you wouldn't otherwise get. So, um, so those are the three uh, things we'll be exploring. Uh, but we'll introduce the motion today in council, and then have a special hearing on Friday uh, to ask the city clerk more more specifically why it costs so much. Right. When originally they said the cost would be about 1.3 million. Right. In fixed costs, and and now that has grown to 2.5 million. I don't understand that. And then the. I understand the mailers. Those are the easiest things to calculate, but I think we might even be able to trim some of those costs. Right. So, so I'm not. Uh, I don't think anybody on this committee uh, would support uh, reducing the budget to ten thousand. I haven't heard anybody say that. Right. Um, and the question is, and and our president Garcetti said that he would not. Uh, he would want to find uh, other ways to replenish that. So, too, but he also said no rollover, and that could be a real problem. Yeah, the rollover I, I, of unspent funds is a major amount of money. True. I met with all, all just on this point. I met with all of my neighborhood councils last night, um, all the presidents to discuss this, and um, they felt the same way. That uh, why was it costing four million uh, for, for the election? So that they, they were very concerned about that. They also s said they would like to get the one point five million back from Dunn for outreach, and you know they were willing to like take thirty five thousand. And then uh, take their outreach back, which would put them back up to forty-five thousand. And they were willing to roll, they were willing to give back to the mothership, uh, you know, all unspent funds like before uh, July one, two thousand and eight. So that they felt like that was a good compromise. Well, this is very. Um, and by the way, Mr. Parks, uh, <clears throat> in when I asked him about uh, this item, he did say that. It wasn't his intent to um, sl slash the budget per se to ten thousand, but that he didn't feel that the city clerk's allocation was accurate, that there would be some savings, and that that money could go back to the neighborhood council. But I, I think we need to do it uh, uh, in a more proactive way. Uh, if we, if we don't think the city clerk is going to cost that much, then we shouldn't give them four million. Right. Uh, because if there's you know, if there's a way to spend it, <laughs> they'll spend yeah. it. Um, so and you're right. In the initial report where we asked yeah. them to report on the feasibility of taking over the elections, they gave a dollar amount that was not that high. Well, the city attorney has been very, very patient in allowing yeah, us to have this conversation. I, <laughs> I didn't see you. I could feel you could it. feel it. Yeah. I wasn't looking. It. I wasn't making eye We have one more public comment card. Joanne uh, <laughs> mm, Ivanic Garb. I think part of the problem, I'm Joanne Yavanek Garb from West Hills Neighborhood Council. I think part of the problem is, is that when uh, somebody is getting an estimate, these little carts, we get these little carts, 5,000 of them for $200 mm -hmm. printed. These, aren't they nice? On both sides. They're lovely. Mm -hmm. And we're using that for our information to get. Um, information out when we're having events we're now getting them printed Worth because we get a lot of bang for the buck right 
And I think part of the problem is, is that when people from the city ask for um, a, a proposal for mm -hmm. somebody and how much things are going to cost, mm -hmm. because it is the city or the state or the federal government, mm -hmm. they yang the price up. Mm -hmm. And we had an incident where we had gotten, uh, we wanted a quote, and because we were considered part of the city, mm -hmm. uh, they said, uh, they, gave, they gave us a much higher quote. And then when we told them, no, we're, yes, we are part of the city, but we're part of the neighborhood council here, and we just have a small budget. All of a sudden, they go, oh, okay, $300 came off the quote. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So there's $300 here, $300 mm -hmm. there. And it keeps going on, and uh, mm -hmm. pretty soon it's $1,000, $1,500, uh, $5,000 for something that we could get it as as we have a member of our uh, neighborhood council, Ron, I can get it for you wholesale, uh, Sobel. <laughs> you know, anything that we do, he always checks his sources to see how, ch how much cheaper that we can get it. So I think there are things that could come out of the budget, just eliminating extraneous costs. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it's my speech and I'm sticking to it today. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you. With that, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Good job. Yeah, you need the attachment.